Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Henrico's Environmental Action Resource Team podcast. My name is Jeff Wydell, and I'm with the Henrico County Public Relations Department. And we are here joined today with a very special guest. Her name is Megan Brown. She is the Executive Coordinator for Keep Henrico Beautiful. And uh, hi, Megan. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me well, on I'm this podcast. I'm glad to have you here. It's a beautiful spring day. Yes. I guess we've already dated this now, right? So, so yeah. If you see this in the winter, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So tell me about Keep Henrico Beautiful. What do you all do? Okay, so we are a program in the Department of Public Utilities. And I guess sometimes I have a hard time sort of being concise with my description, but we are basically litter prevention, recycling education, and watershed education. But all of those things encompass, you know, many aspects of sort of like environmentalism in Henrico. So we we do a lot with waste reduction we even dabble in native plants and um we give out awards to homeowners who use sustainable practices so a lot goes into keeping Rico beautiful and you'll <laughs> probably realize that after we start talking about the specific thing today it's like, oh boy yeah, yeah. here she is again oh, what's she, she gonna talk awesome. about now <laughs> you no know, that's cool and um and I'm not sure how aware of pe- what people may know about the Heart Group, but um, mm-hmm. the Henrico Environmental Action Resource Team has started up. And what we're doing is we've got a, a variety of different departments in the county that we're really focusing on sustainability and what we can do with the local um, environment. Yes. And that Keep Henrico Beautiful is really a big part of that. Yes, yes. We're really excited about it and we're excited to be a part of it. That's yes. cool. So, so why are you here today? So (laughs) I'm trying to give sort of like a little teaser to a presentation we're having. Um, It is part of the Land Lover series. Mm -hmm. And the Land Lover series is is a group of presentations that we do in partnership with Henrico Libraries. Because if you don't know, our libraries are awesome. (laughs) And basically we have these presentations to sort of educate homeowners what they can do um, in their yards, in their homes, sort of sustainable practices. And this next one, April 15th, at the Libby Mill Library at 1 p.m. is about vermicomposting. Vermicar, verma what? (laughs) (laughs) Verma, V-E-R-M-I, vermicomposting. Okay, and okay, so what is that? Okay, so basically (laughs) it means Worm composting. Really? <laughs> yes. So what? The, How do you feel about that? Well, you know, it's interesting. It brings up a lot of ideas, a lot of okay. thoughts. <laughs> it sounds a little, a little gross, maybe. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so what do worms have to do with composting? So basically, when humans compost things, we basically like to speed up, speed it up. So like when we compost in our backyards, like in a compost bin. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get our organic matter, like our leaves and our um, grass clippings and our food wastes broken down really quickly. Right. Um, with worms, that is just another way to break down organic matter mm-hmm. quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just another type of composting. There's so many different ways you could go. This is just a way with worms. Mm-hmm. And so does it, so, so it speeds up the process? Yes, it okay. speeds up the process. Um, any idea of how much, which, how faster it is? Or? So like basically if you have a composting bin outside, um, depending, depending how, um, how invested you are and how much you turn it over and, and work with it, you, you'll probably get a, a really good soil amendment in maybe like six months, oh. seven months, eight months. Worm composting, you can get a soil amendment ah, in like eight weeks maybe. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's basically, now I don't want to scare you, Jeff. It's basically, <laughs> um, and I don't want to scare anybody because it really isn't gross, but right. the worms are eating the organic matter and okay. the compost is their poop. 
It's called worm castings. <laughs> <laughs> worm casting. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with like a movie or anything like that, right? No, 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 no. The castings are the poop. And the and that is, some people call it gold because it's just, you can just put it right in your garden or right. add it to your, your soil, add it to your potted plants. And it's nutrient dense and um, great. Now, the... So be, before we get into the worm cast, yes. <laughs> um, tell me um, if you could quickly go over what what we what types of things can we compost? Sure. And why? What's the what do we do with it? Okay. So um, do you so well like outside? Like if you have a compost bin outside, mostly you're going to be putting in leaves. Um, you know, leaves falling from the tree, grass clippings. From your lawnmower, you can even um, put weeds and um, branches, like small things broken up like that. And then you can put kitchen waste mm-hmm. in it. Now, the kitchen waste you want to use is like vegetable scraps right. and fruit peels, but you're not going to compost things like dairy or meat mm-hmm. um, or anything that's like fatty, like oils and things like that. Um so we compost those things. In vermicomposting, you can put leaves in it, but mostly I'm going to show you um, some other things to put in it. But it's it's mainly focused around the kitchen stuff right. for vermicomposting. And the reason we do it, well, uh, the reason many people do it is to get that rich organic material to add to their gardens. But there's a more... Um, you know, sort of existential reason, like you don't want to add things to the landfill. You want to reduce the amount of waste that you create. Mm -hmm. So basically when we toss um, food waste into the landfill, everyone thinks it's just going to decompose rapidly. It, It doesn't. It's, there's no air in there circulating. It's all what they call anaerobic without oxygen. Mm -hmm. And when it breaks down really slowly, it creates methane. And as you know, methane is a greenhouse gas. But when food breaks down in a compost bin where air gets to it um, and it's composted rapidly, there's not so much methane mean. So it's kind of like, yay, you get a cool thing for your soil, but also, yay, you're doing a good thing for the environment. (laughs) Cool. And, and And the thing is what I've heard too about composting, material is that it's the good stuff you know yes you can buy co- composted material or soil amending materials at different places but mm-hmm. you know what's gone into it yeah there's yeah no, there's no mystery question mark exactly stuff. yeah because you know what you're eating and what yeah exa- you're you're exactly right it's no. you know where you're getting it from right. so yeah. okay so uh, so the big question in the room is what kind of worms are we talking? Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> that is a very good question because it's not the earthworms that you just go out and dig up from the soil. Okay. They, they're they not really into eating your kitchen scraps. Okay. Um, they like to eat soil and so stuff. So they're kind of snobs, huh? They are. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, they're still awesome, um, but there's like a few worms that you use for worm composting, but mostly there's a a big star that everybody uses and it's called the red wiggler. Hmm. And that is Icinia fatida. And (laughs) you can buy them online. I mean, just look up red wigglers for sale and you can have them shipped to your house Uh or, um, People will sometimes have them on sale like at Facebook Marketplace because there are some like really um, uh, people people who are really dedicated to worm composting and they raise <laughs> them like they actually farm the worms. So you can often get them locally as okay. well. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So um, how do I do this at home? Okay. So I'm not going to go into like the whole entire process because I want you to come to that presentation (laughs) but I just want to show you how like super simple it is and this is one of the reasons I love vermicomposting is because it's like cheap okay it's not expensive and for our for our um, folks that are listening through podcasts they're not looking at the video 
if you can maybe describe what we have in front of us so they can follow along. Okay. I have a Rubbermaid tote. So it's one of those totes that everybody has in their garages or their attic that we store things in. This is a 14 gallon. This is a pretty good size. You could probably go up to like 18. You you don't need um, a lot of space and you actually don't want a, a huge tub because really the earthworm, the the red wigglers are a type of earthworm. Um, the, they don't want to go really deep. They want to kind of stay in about 12 inches. Okay. Um, so it's a Rubbermaid tote and it does have a top because they don't like light. So you have to keep them comfortable. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're just not going to work, right? Exactly. They're going to go on strike. They're going to go, it. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and no one, everyone wants to keep their worms happy. Exactly. Yes. So you're not going to use one of those clear ones, right? right. Because they don't use light. And also we're going to, um, you're going to drill into this okay. tote. And you know how the clear ones they're sort of like a different resin, a plastic, and and that cracks. Yeah. So these sort of like rubbery ones, okay. you can drill, and it's you're not gonna, you might make little tiny cracks, but it's not gonna be a big deal. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, let's get to it. Okay. So, <laughs> those of you listening, in what you're gonna need to start a worm composting system is this Rubbermaid bin. Um, you're gonna need a drill. Don't buy a drill because you're just going to need it for like five minutes. And so some people get put off like, oh, there's drilling involved. Like, this is not for me. No, this is really simple drilling. You can just borrow it from a neighbor and like return it in five minutes. Right. And right. I do have a drill with me if you would like me to show you how sure, simple it yeah, is. Absolutely. Okay. So what do you Where have? Did I put is, it? There, oh. is the material, the things that you have in there is just to kind of show. Yes. Okay, basically bedding. Okay, so there do you so do you put that in there ahead of time? Well, you could drill it first. Oh, okay. I just didn't want to carry all this right. around but in separate bags. Shred, you've got shredded paper and shredded cardboard that are in there. Yes, okay. that is the bedding okay. for the worms. Okay. Right. Um well they're they're gonna be nice and warm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And surprisingly enough, they will eat this. Really? Yes. Okay. This will all turn into worm casting. You know, it, we can all multitask. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Look, it, they, they need air. Like I said, it, it's an aerobic process. It needs air. So okay. you're just going to take your drill. Okay. Like how simple was that? <laughs> and I you're, don't. And, and, and you're drilling right now about like, I don't know, like two or three inches from the top. Yeah. You just need like a row around the top and okay. then you're going to put some um, in, in the lid as well. Right. And um, like, like I said, you don't really need any tool any skills right. for tools and then like that is the heavy lifting of right. making a worm composting bin and then you just put, start putting your material in there yep you're gonna and... yep you need some so you're gonna have this bedding and you can use shredded newspaper shredded cardboard you can even use um office paper you're gonna soak it in water mm -hmm. beforehand worms need a moist environment they breathe through their skin so this is all going to be moist it's not going to be dry like this and you're going to need way more because when if i got this wet right now it would it the volume would decrease so right. you're going to need more so you probably need what about like maybe eight inches of material altogether or yeah i mean i would even i would even put it up up to here okay. up okay. up close to the top because once you get it wet it it's gonna uh, like i said decrease in volume cool. Very then cool. you're going to need your kitchen scraps. You should get about a cup full of soil from your yard or your garden bed because okay. that puts like beneficial microbes in there. Okay. And then you need some sort of grit because um, worms take, they don't have teeth. So they use like a little of the gritty material yeah. to in their gizzards to like break down the stuff. So you can use like a handful of sand or... You can use used coffee grounds. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That yeah. And so you'll put that all in there. Um, you'll get your worms, and then they will start to eat this and turn it into that black gold. Wow. So then yeah. eight weeks later, you're ready to go, and you can get your gardens or 
repot your plants or anything cool like that. Yeah, and then there's all sorts of steps that, you know, different steps you can take to to remove the worm casting because you don't want to throw your worms out with with your black gold. Okay. Um, these worms don't do well um, in Virginia climates. Uh-huh. So that's something I forgot to mention. Um, worm bins really aren't going to be outside okay. in Virginia. Okay. You can keep them um, for part of of the year. You could keep them like on a covered porch. You can keep them in a garage, okay. a utility room. Some people keep them under their kitchen sink. Right. Um, and, but basically, you know, once, once you start removing their worm castings, you want to keep them because that's what's making your soil amendment. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, one of the things I think is neat about this is that it seems like it could be a family project. Yes. Because it's something that we're trying to engage kids about sustainability and, you know. Absolutely. Yes. And so, um, you know, the kids are going to love searching for the worms, seeing, right. did they eat my apple core yet? Um <laughs> You can even get them involved, like, why use a paper shredder? Why not have the kids shred the paper? Right. And, you know, that sort of thing, keep their little hands busy. So, yeah, it's kind of fun. And maybe keep them away for the phone for a little bit. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, do you, um, where, can, where can people get more information about this? So there are just copious amounts of, vermicomposting or worm composting videos online okay. every single video or blog or um web page will tell you something a little bit different right right everybody has their own way of doing it so you kind of do also have to be flexible mm-hmm. you kind of have to figure out what works best for you. So if you're one of those people who are like, I need to know if I need two cups of soil per three cups of worm per like, like, okay, that you can get a a base, but you, you know, your environment is not going to be the same as everyone else's environment. Right. You know, and and this is not like making sourdough where it has to be perfect. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So you have to be flexible and you have to be, like willing to be like, oh man, you know, I did this. I added too much water. Now I need to go shred more papers so it right. soaks up some of the water. Right. That type of thing. Okay. So you can go online, find all that information. But then, like I said, the Land Lover series on April fifteenth, we have a local worm farmer coming, oh, and cool. yeah, he will talk about it and and he'll answer your questions and he'll and he might say diff, you know totally different things from me um so like i said you just you gotta be you gotta be flexible like a worm (laughs) like a worm (laughs) oh my goodness well megan i wanted to say thank you so much Uh for joining us today and one of the things i wanted to to point out that i'm sorry the people that are not watching this there's a little friend of ours that's on the table here and that is Stuart, the turtle and Stuart reminds us about what um, he is our choose to reuse mascot. Right. And he reminds us to be good stewards of our environment. Exactly. All righty. Well, um, y'all take it easy and um, we'll hope to see you at the, at the, uh, the, uh, the worm party. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>